Hello! <laughs> we have a wonderful geometric math challenge here. Like, when I saw this question, I was confused. I don't know where to start from. Yes. So, I was confused just as you are right now. But what do we do? This is how to go about it. First of all, let's get the center of that circle. Please, this is not drawn to scale. Not at all. All right? So, let's get the center of that circle. Let's assume this is the center of the circle. And this is a... B, C, D, D, okay? And this place is the center of the circle. First of all, notice that these lines are tangents, okay? These are tangents. All right. Now, remember that in a circle of center O, in a circle of center O, if you have a tangent to the circle. When you draw a straight line from the center to the, to the meeting point of the tangent and the circle, that is the point of contact, you are going to form a right angle triangle, right? So you have a right angle here. Now we are going to apply that here, okay? And we're going to follow some processes to get the values of our x, all right? Now, let us continue. So, if this is the center of the circle, that means if I draw a straight line from this center to this point, I'll form a right angle. If I draw a straight line from this center O to this point, I'll form another right angle. The same thing goes from here to here and from here to here. So, let's go ahead and join them, okay? So, I'm going to take my time a bit. Yeah, so this place is 90 degrees. This is another 90 degrees. This is another 90 degrees. And this is another 90 degrees. All right. Now, let us join this zero, center zero, to A, to B, to C, and to D. You will notice that we are going to form a particular type of angle. Okay? Now, let's go ahead and do that. I think I need to use this. Let me try so that this place will not be too... Yeah, so that we understand it well. Okay. So, that is line AO. Okay? And this line AO, this one is 23 degrees, not this. So, permit me to write it there so that we don't get confused. All right, so this is our 23 degrees. Now, similarly, similarly, let's join O to B. All right, let's join O to B. So, I'll try to use my hand. Now, this is 45. I think that saves a lot of time, right? Yeah. So, this O is joined to B. Now, let's join O to D. Okay, and also let's join O to X. All right, now remember that there is another join of O to this that completes this triangle. Now let us look at them and form equations from them. If you look at this, notice that OA or AO is the uh, hypotenuse of this triangle now, okay? So, AO squared, using Pythagoras theorem, should be equal to this place squared, which is 23, right? Plus this place squared. And remember that from the center to this circle, that means this is our radius, okay? So, we call it R squared. That our side, okay? Now, if we talk about OB, the same thing, that is BO squared will be equal to, because this is our hypotenuse. So BO squared will be equal to 45 squared plus this squared, right? Which is also our angle, our radius. All right. Now, OC squared or CO squared. 
is equal to this is the right angle so this place squared and remember that the length of this place is our x all right okay sorry this is our x all right now this is our x and this place is our right angle now this place squared that is co squared is equal to x squared plus now this is our a our radius squared okay now for d o squared d o squared this is equal to this is our hypotenuse so d o squared is equal to this place is our radius r squared plus this side that is giving 28 squared we have formed these important equations now permit me to try to put them here because i will also use this to form another equation that we are going to compare both of them and from there we'll be able to get the value of our x all right now welcome to my channel if this is the first time you are seeing this amazing face <laughs> and if you are a returning viewer thank you so much i owe you a lot thank you now um click your subscription button and turn on your notification bell if this is your first time so that anytime we upload new videos you will be notified tune in at your convenience there must be something new to watch by the grace of god okay now let us continue like i said let me try to write this here so let me quickly do that Hope you are still with me. All right, done. Now let me clean this so that I'll have enough space to work with. Amazing, right? You are still confused on what is this lady trying to do. You are going to see what I'm trying to do. Now let us draw a, tra a rectangle now. Let's draw a rectangle. If this is a rectangle, okay, and you pick any point on that rectangle. Now, this point we are picking now is the same thing as this point. This is their meeting point here, okay? It's the same thing, all right? Now, if you pick any point in a rectangle and you decide to draw a straight line through that point vertically and horizontally, okay? Now, this is our rectangle A, B, C, D. So, A b c d what am i trying to do just watch if i call this x1 okay and call this x2 and call this y1 and call this y2 let's assume this is a rectangle because you know it's a freehand sketch now this is a rectangle okay so it means that this place is x1 and this place is x1 as well right so we have x1 and x1. We have x2 and x2. Similarly, we have y1 and y1. Let me write it here. And we have y2 and y2. I hope you understood what I did. So it means that x1, this place is also equal to x1 and this place is also equal to x1. Now for y1, here is also equal to y1, here is also equal to y1, and so on and so forth yes now let us join remember that this is our center o so we can also call this place o now let's join a to o to get another equation for our a o we already have it here but we need another equation for our a o okay so that we can bring them together and get the value of our x all right so if we draw that line now note that this is right angle right so we have that a o squared using the pythagoras theorem we have that a o squared is equal to x1 squared plus y1 squared, right? So we have x1 squared plus y1 squared. Now, similarly, if we join this to b, if we join that to b, now this is a right angle, this is a right angle, any one we want to use. So o b squared or b o squared, we will be equal to y1 x2 squared plus y1 squared. 
Don't worry, you are going to see what you are going to do. That will give us the value of our X. We are almost through with this question. Now, let us join C to O. Sorry, this is our C and this is our D. According to this diagram, so this is C and this is D. Now, let's join C to O. Okay? So, we have C O squared is equal to y x2 squared plus y2 squared, right? Now, let's join O to D. So, D O squared will be equal to x1 squared plus y2 squared. Now, I want you to look at this. We have formed this, so permit me to clean this so that I will explain myself very well, okay? Are you enjoying this video? If yes, please give us a thumbs up, all right? That is if you are enjoying the video. Now, this is where we are. If you look closely, you notice that A O squared plus c o squared is equal to b o squared plus d o squared now let's write it so that you see a o squared plus c o squared is equal to b o squared plus d o squared now let's write it out so what is our a o squared we have x1 squared plus y1 squared Plus our C O squared is X2 squared plus Y2 squared is equal to, let's see if it is true, B O squared is X2 squared plus Y1 squared plus D O squared is X1 squared plus Y2 squared. Now let's check. We have x1 squared here, we have x1 squared here. y1 squared, y1 squared. x2 squared, x2 squared. y2 squared, y2 squared. So you notice that if you sum up this, it must be equal to this. Now, where am I coming from? But recall, recall that we have already that AO squared is 23 squared plus R squared, right? So let's go ahead and write that. Now, having established that this is equal to this, let's go back to this. So AO squared is what? So we have 23 squared plus R squared plus our CO squared is X squared plus R squared is equal to um, B O squared is 45 squared plus R squared. And D O squared is R squared plus 28 squared. Now let's collect like terms. So to collect like terms, we have 23 squared plus X squared plus now r squared plus r squared we give us two r squared right is equal to here we have 45 squared plus two r squared as well why am i using capital r let's not confuse each other okay <laughs> then plus 28 squared now if you look closely we have plus 2 arrow here and we have plus 2 arrow squared here as well. If we should bring this to this side, it becomes plus 2 arrow squared minus 2 arrow squared. So we can actually remove them to reduce the whole thing. <laughs> so now we have um, 23 squared plus x squared is equal to 45 squared plus 28 squared. Now let us take this to this side of the equation. Let's take 23 squared to the other side. If we do that, we are left with x squared is equal to 45 squared plus 28 squared 
minus 23 squared. Okay? Now, x squared is equal to, anytime you have two digit number that ends with 5, and they're asked to square it, I'm going to use a mass trick for it. And I'll advise you check my playlist on mass tricks. There are a lot of mass tricks you're going to see there. So for a two digit number that ends with 5, this is how you get its square. 5 squared is 25. Now, after 4, you are going to get 5. That is, after you have counted 4, you count 5. Now, 5 times 4 is 20. And this is the answer. So, it means that 45 squared is 20, 25. Plus. Now, I'm going to use difference of 2 squares here. Remember that A squared minus B squared is equal to A minus B multiplied by a plus b okay so we can write this as 28 minus 23 multiplied by 28 plus 23 all right so we have x squared is equal to 20 25 plus now 28 minus 23 will give us 5 so 5 multiplied by 28 plus 23 will give us 51, right? So let's keep solving. Permit me to erase the... I don't even think we still need the diagram. We have already gotten what we wanted from there. So, permit me to write this last line. That x squared is equal to 20, 25 plus. Now, 1 times 5, 5 times 1 is 5. 5 times 5 is 25. Okay? Now, we have x squared is equal to 20, 25 plus 2, 5, 5. So we have 0, carry 1, we have 8, we have 2, and we have 2 as well. Alright? Yeah. So we have 2, 2, 8, 0. Now to get the value of x, we take square root of both sides of this equation. Okay. So this, we cancel this, we have x is equal to, now square root of 2, 2, 8, 0. Let's try to do that by drawing a line. Since we are not asked to use a calculator. Now 2, we divide this to give us 1, 1, 4, 0. 2, we divide this again to give us 5, 5, remainder 1, 7, and 0. Okay? Now, we have 2 again. 2, we divide this to give us 2, 2, remainder 1. Divide 17, we have 8, 8, remainder 1. Divide 10, we have 5. Let me see if this is divisible by 3 by adding up the digits. If I get a sum that is divisible by 3, then it is divisible by 3. Now, 2 plus 8 will give me 10. 10 plus 5 is 15. And 15 is divisible by 3, so definitely 3 can divide this. So let's go with 3. Now, 28 divided by 3 we give us 9, 9 remainder 1. 15 divided by 3, we give us 5. Now, let's go with 5. 5 divides 9. We have 1, 1 remainder 4. Divides 45, we have 9. So, 19 we go to give us 1. Now, you notice that the only, the only um, perfect square we can get from this is just 2 by multiplied by itself. That is the only thing we have as a pair. So, it means that this can only be factorized as 4. 2 times 2, which is 4, multiplied by the whole of this, since we can we don't have any identical number to pay again. And you notice that from here to here, we still give us 570. So we have 570. Now remember that square root of A multiplied by B is equal to square root of A multiplied by square root of B. So we have X is equal to square root of 4 multiplied by square root of 570. So we have x is equal to 2 root 5 
70 okay thank you so much for watching see you in my next video bye